Hello and welcome to another ATG webinar uh, today. We're going to be talking about Hive CMS, the content management system, and specifically the library and tag setup in Hive. So let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Brian Weeks, Architectural Production Lead and a Senior AEC Technical Specialist here at ATG. Uh, I've been in architecture now for 23 years, and I've been at ATG for three. Uh, what brought me to ATG was a program they started called Team Augmentation. And what that means is that you can hire any of our AEC professionals to work with your company, uh, whether it's uh, help with construction documents, BIM modeling, template builds, renderings. Uh, we even have a reality capture team that we are often hired to come out and scan for as built And then our team can model that uh, project for you and deliver you a Revit model uh, ready to go and start, uh, you know, start working on your design. So if you have any interest in those needs, if your firm needs that help, uh, definitely just contact us, contact ATG USA for that assistance. And uh, we will be happy to visit with you about your project. I do like to also mention that today I am presenting exclusively on a BIM box. Uh, these are uh, workstations developed specifically for Revit. Uh, it's the fastest computer I've ever worked on in, in all my career. Uh, it's an amazing machine. I can regularly run Revit, uh, Enscape, and do, uh, do Zoom meetings, do Zoom presentations simultaneously. Uh, if your firm is looking to upgrade your system, or upgrade systems for your firm, again, just contact ATG USA. Uh, we can have one of our uh, BIMBOX experts meet with you, run some live benchmark tests, and uh, show you what they're all about. So today, as we discussed, we're going to talk about Hive CMS and libraries and tags, and how do we go about organizing the content that we have in Hive. Uh, Hive can be utilized multiple ways, and there's different workflows to using and storing and filtering that content. There's different workflows that, diff that work for different firms. And today I'm just going to talk about a specific method that I use uh, utilizing libraries and tags. Um, and hopefully this provides some insight, maybe some inspiration for your firm and how you can organize and uh, and store your firm's content as well. So we're going to talk about what is Hive and what can be stored there, uh, how, how to organize that content for your firm, and then how to create and share uh, Hive libraries. I'm going to have a couple of uh, slides here at the beginning, but then we're going to actually jump into live demo, take a look at Hive itself and how it interacts and works within Revit and the interface that we can use to create these libraries and tags. So what is Hive CMS? It's a content management system. It's a plugin that works directly within Revit, uh, but it can also be used in AutoCAD. And so it's a really unique feature with Hive is that we can uh, utilize and store Revit content, AutoCAD content, uh, and then just typical everyday con uh, content, PDFs, images, uh, Excel files, Word documents, the list goes on and on. And Hive can store this content uh, and, it, and it stores it and organizes it by your library and tag setup. Uh, the great thing about Hive, though, is that now you have all your content for your company in one location. Uh, your users don't have to go find content. We're not having to go out to the internet and search for content. They can message your BIM manager and say, hey, I'm looking for this content. That BIM manager can then find the content, store it in Hive, and it's in one location where everyone can use it, search for it, and even get updated versions of that family if any changes occur. Uh, the other great thing about Hive that I love personally uh, with my day-to-day -day workflows is that Hive also lets us extract uh, system uh, system families from Revit in Hive. So not only loadable families, but also system families such as schedules and wall types and door type or and floor types and ceilings and so on and so on. So I'm going to show you a little bit about that as well when we get into the live demonstration. So how to organize the content? Well, Hive is really unique in that it doesn't use a folder structure. 
And for a lot of firms, that could be a, a, a steep learning curve because we're so used to, in our careers, developing our content, storing our content in folders on our network server. And so we'll have project folders. And then under that, specific folders as they pertain to maybe our specifications or our construction documents or even the Revit models and then PDFs from construction administration specifically, those files can get very large. And we have folders within folders within folders that are dated and uh, you know organized and categorized. But what can happen with that organization is that our file structure can get very large, very quickly, uh, deep folder structure that it can take time to try to find that content. So when our users are looking for content, it's typically not a fast process. Uh, you know, we say, we'll go to this project, we liked this detail on this project, or go to this project, we have a cut sheet on that product that we used. And so then they have to go to that folder structure, try to find the content, search for that content, and then hopefully find it after they're searching and then utilize it. Well, Hive doesn't use folders, they use what are called libraries. And why that's unique is because libraries can help us organize our content that's stored in Hive across multiple libraries. So we can, for example, if we have one single door family, we can store that, or I'm sorry, not store, we can connect and link that door family to multiple libraries. So with those libraries, there's a couple of different workflows. We can have an organizational library. So such as, you know, here's our doors, here's our windows, or we can even have uh, libraries by project. We can have libraries by uh, content type, uh, code documents, uh, manufacturer content. And I'll, I'll show you that when I do the live demo, I'll kind of show you how I've got some of my libraries set up. But the great thing about it is that any content in those folders can be, or in those libraries can be put in other libraries. Now we also have shared libraries, which are libraries that can be created and shared with people outside your organization through a shared library link. So it's very important for sharing those files, as well as public libraries. And so these are uh, a growing set of subscription libraries that will be uh, available to all people, all people within Hive that can utilize these public libraries, whether it's Revit content or manufacturer content, MEP, I'll, I'll kind of show you kind of into that as well, uh, where these libraries are being developed. Uh, the next step for organizing that content is going to be tags. And Hive allows us to associate tags to our content. And you can have multiple tags associated to content. And why that's important is now not only can we store our content in the libraries, but now we can associate that content with the tag. So for example, some of the ones I have on my screen relates to a lot of the CA uh, administration files that we have to deal with. And then if you wanna store that on Hive, how do we, how do we organize it? Well, you can have construction document tags or type tags or category specific or, you know, to Revit specific type tags or even file specific tags. The list can go on and on and it's really unlimited as to how your firm would want to organize that content or those tags. And the great thing with Hive too is that you can receive feedback from your users uh, to your BIM manager or your managing uh, team for Hive that receive feedback that say, hey, we need a tag for this, or perhaps we need a tag for this uh, type of file. And so your team can then receive that feedback, create a tag, and then your users can associate those tags with the content. So libraries and tags, those are the two methods that we're going to take a look at today in organizing our content. So let's go to a live demonstration going to open Hive, or I'm sorry, Revit first. And you can see I've got a CTC software tab. And all of your users, when you have Hive installed, your users will have the CTC tab with Hive. Uh, and this is cross, uh, across multiple versions of Revit. So this same setup, this same tab will be in all your versions of Revit. Uh, 
Uh, you can also see a couple of the other tool sets that, that we offer here at ATG with CTC tools, batch suite, manager suite, project suites. I use these tools in my weekly workflows. And if you're interested in any of the tool sets that you see, contact us, atgusa.com. We can set up some demos to show you some of the workflow tool sets, uh, suites that we offer. We also have casework configurator and super door configurator, which create casework and door assemblies. It's another tool set that we can demo. But today we're talking about Hive. And if I click on Hive, it's going to pull open a window, which is uh, for my Hive content management system. Uh, you can see we've got a sidebar and then some buttons here for the various uh, tools that we can access. Home, search, save searches, which allows us to, uh, your users to save specific searches. So if there's an item that you use over and over again uh, that you're constantly searching for, such as code documents or specific construction administration documents or even Revit families and specific names, you can save those searches here. They can be private if you have them unchecked or they can be shared. So you can actually share that content with other users as a save search. The add request button, will take you, if I click on that, then that takes us directly to the CTC control panel that your BIM managers would have access to. And this will list out requests from your users. Hey, we need this type, you know, we need a new freezer, we need a new door family. And so those requests will be uh, shown for uh, your BIM managers. And so they can find that content and add it. And then the last uh, control here on the bottom is the BIM manager control, which is the add content. And adding contents as easy as adding whole folders, files, CAD files, or if you have a Revit project open, adding Revit project elements from that specific project. And this is really where Hive shines because we have that capability now to add families that are system families that typically Revit would not let us extract and store. Uh, ceilings, curtain wall mullions, floor types, roof types, railing types, schedules, sheets, wall sweeps, basic walls. These can all be extracted from your projects, maybe your company template, for example, and stored within Hive, placed inside of a library, and I go to my Brian's test library, and you can see uh, some of the families that I have uh, stored here in my test library that are system families. Let's go ahead and hit apply and sort. So we've got some documents in here, PDFs, Word documents, Excel files, but then we have some walls and doors and floors, schedules, sheets. These are all within my test library, uh, but you can link these to other libraries. So if I were to go wall, so there's some wall types. And if I want to load that wall type, I'm a user, I need to load our standard exterior wall type into my project. I can just right click hit load, it shows you all the details over here. Revit, you know, the file type, the Revit version details specific to the parameters of that wall. But what I want to do is I just want to load it. You know, there we go. And that's great for reducing the size of those company templates now because we can store those system families in Hive instead of our company template, reduce the size of that startup time or reduce the time for that startup time for starting a project with a company template that has everything in it. Now we can store it in Hive. Walls, floors, ceilings, schedules. Okay, I guess I don't have any floors in my test library, but I do have a door. So anyway, that's content. If I go back to the main library, uh, you can see I organize my library in a, in a way that works for me, but as your users, uh, you know, they can develop different systems or your BIM managers can develop different systems of organizing your content. I like to actually have my manufacturer content in specific libraries. 
such as lighting. You know, if we go to the Bradley, uh, the Bradley has a great library of Revit content that you can download for free from their website, store, organize it in your library so all your users can have access to the latest and greatest content. So if we were to search and, you know, I pulled up the specific library, but if I were to go ahead and search for that specific content. So if I just say, you know, sync, then it's going to pull up all the different types of syncs, or perhaps I want to say three. And, and when I type the search terms, it's relating to something in that family, whether it's going to be the name or it's going to be a parameter value. Uh, there are a couple of different ways that you can search for that content uh, in Hive. And that's why it's also important to talk about tags too, because you can search for the content by names or parameter values or Revit type, you know, Revit file. Here's my, uh, you know, you're seeing my content here but I have a details and filters button. Filters allow me to uh, select specific search content. So I can search folder. I can search by only Revit content. So if I don't want to see these Word documents, you know, I can select only Revit content. I can select by specific file version, units. So a lot of different methods here to search. But then I can also pull up details specific to that family. So I can see all the types and then specific parameters unique to that one family. Hive also has the ability for your users to write reviews, uh, add attachments. The attachments aspect is really cool because now I can add color charts, specification sections, cut sheets, installation instructions. These can be attached to that family. They aren't actually in, you know, part of the family. So if I load this family, any of the files don't get put in my project. What Hive is doing is making an association between the files that I link here to that family. And like I said, the important part of that is it makes that association to the files. So cut sheets and color charts and things that I mentioned can have that association to that file that helps your spec writers find information faster on the families that are being used in your project. Uh, there can also be a link added specific to this, to this uh, family uh, using that as well. So a lot of different methods to connect your information between the actual Revit family file and other files by utilizing Hive. Uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to clear my filters first. And then again, I'm going to, I loaded a wall. Let's show you like if I want to search for a specific item, I search for a door and I wanted to load this door. The other great thing about Hive is that it allows us to load individual family types. Uh, default in Revit is that we load a family, it loads every type that's in that family, whether we need it or not. With Hive, I can select the specific family type. So if I cl right click and left click load, it's going to pull up a window for me and it says, well, what types of you know, families are you wanting to load? So I can select the size I want. I can load all of them if I want. But of course, we're trying to keep our file size down. Let's just load the selected file type. It's going to load that family. And let me switch back over to my floor plan here so we can do that and delete that wall so we can see the door. And there it is. Uh, super easy to use. Again, it, it allows your users to find that content that we need on a daily basis as we're working on construction drawings and we're looking for that content. We're trying to speed up the process for production and finding Revit content. And that's what Hive does is it allows your firm to organize and store that content and make it easily accessible for your users. 
Okay, well, let's go ahead. I'm going to look at tags now. So when you have a family, let's go back to door again, and we can see the, the tags that are associated to that door here in the details list. But if I want to assign additional tags, uh, I can, as a BIM manager or a project manager with those permissions, I can click manage tags and assign additional tags. So all of these tags are tags that have been created that will be created by your firm. Your firm determines, well, what tags do we need to create? You know, we've got ADA, we've got, you know, AutoCAD, maybe it's by construction administration, so on and so forth. And you create these tags to assign them to your families. And it's very unique in that it's very flexible way to uh, organize your content because every firm's different. Every firm organizes their content differently. Maybe it's by date, maybe it's by file type. The sky's the limit. You create the tags you want to organize that content. And to create those tags, if I go back to home and manage, what it does is it takes me back to the CTC tool website for where your BIM managers have their control for your projects, content management, requests, setting up specific users and groups and how that organizes that content within Hive, who has access to specific libraries. That's all handled through this. But tags are going to be handled under your CMS, libraries, and tags. And by clicking on that, it's going to take me to a setup. Super easy create tag, what's the name, create a new, close, and it shows up in Hive as a tagged name that I can then assign to my content. Uh, this is also where you manage your libraries for your content. So you would create new library titles here for your projects. Again, very easy. What's the library name? Do I have an image for it? Maybe it's a client logo or a specific manufacturer image that I want to put as the library image. Setting permissions and then inviting people to that specific library so you can control who has access to those libraries. And that, that access and, and control over the content access is important as well because uh, if your firm works on a lot of uh, military government projects and you have specific teams that have permissions to work on those projects, you can create a team specific to that project and give them access to that library that is specific to the project. And so only they have access to that content. So again, it goes back to the group permissions and user permissions. Uh, to controlling that content within your firm. Here's the public libraries I had spoken about briefly at the beginning. Uh, these are still in development. There are currently 52 different available public libraries that deal anywhere from, you know, Autodesk, uh, out of the box Revit libraries, got a couple of manufacturers. This is still in development. I might mention that uh, CTC is constantly looking for uh, new uh, clients uh, that we can share their content libraries here. Um, so this is some of the public libraries that are being developed and are in, you know, currently available. Uh, so tags. So now let me go back. Now that you've seen how we create the tags, well, how does that work? How do I find my content? Well, if I go back to uh, my search, and I'm looking for a specific tag. Let's do, you know, maybe I don't want Revit content. Uh, and I want to look for a specific tag, such as maybe ADA. I can hit apply. Let me clear out my filter version. I don't need the 2022. It defaults to the current version of Revit you have open. ADA. Where are my filter? Oh, because there's a door. I don't have a tag associated with the door. There we go. Clear the 2022 again. 
So this sheet, the accessibility details, has been associated to a tag for ADA. And this is a full sheet. Um, this is a really cool feature of Revit, as I admit, or of Hive, as I mentioned earlier, is that we can extract sheets from our projects. And as long as the view on the sheet is a detail view, uh, not a model view, <clears throat> it will store that and extract it and save it as that view in your project. And then you can load it uh, directly to your project. So I'm not going to do this one. This usually takes a little bit to load all these views. But if I go to another sheet, uncheck ADA. Uh, let me see. So there's a title sheet. Let's just, that's only got one. It looks like it's got one schedule on it. But if I double click on it or right click load, either way, it's going to take that, automatically convert it to my current project, insert that sheet in any view, any detail views and or schedules, legends on that sheet. Um, if the legend, again, again, it's detail views. Uh, Hive still has the same restrictions as Revit gives us, which is Revit will still not let us transfer model views between projects. You know, if you do the insert this view and you try to select a view, it still does not let us take model views, model to project to project. So Hive is only restricted by what, you know, Revit allows us to do. But by converting the sheet, converting the view, pulling in the schedule. It's going to create that new view and create that new schedule within, high, uh, within my project. And while it's doing that, it's typically, why well, that should have been a fast one there, unless that's a complicated schedule. I didn't look at that very deep, did I? See what the parameters are. No, it's a demo parameter. Okay. Get that to upgrade. Uh, I might mention too on the tags, it's as easy, like I said before, right click on the view, on the on the content, right click, add, uh, add that tag to that content. I'll bet you I have an update. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's why, because there was a family that didn't. It was real. Okay, that schedule is linking to a uh, to a structural temp uh, template within a structural, and so it's having to convert it. I'm going to hit cancel and pick another sheet so we can see this work differently. I apologize. Every demo, I think every demo that I do of these <laughs> of Hive is a little different uh, because of the fact that I just like to uh, play with it, use it, kind of find new stuff. Uh, let's see, find a sheet. Let's just do detail. There we go. There's some of my details. And then I'm going to select a sheet, private category. Sheets, apply. There's all my detail sheets. Uh, let's grab one of these. Let's see, find one with just a few. There we go, that's just got a few details on it. So again, I'm gonna double click and load that. Thank you for bearing with me as we work through a, a new demo. Every time I do this, I do a new demo. Even if you go to YouTube, you can check out some of our webinars that are on, uh, on on YouTube for ATG USA. Every time I do one of these Hive demos, every, every, I try to do them a little different every time. It's a learning process that helps me discover new things about Hive and Revit and how all these, uh, how all these uh, views interact within it. So here's the sheet, loaded all the details. Uh, these are all uh, numbered and ready to be used. The sheets numbered, ready to go. And that was because these are all detail views <clears throat> stored within Hive. Love it, so cool. All right, so let's go back to during the pre the previous or during the presentation portion of the PowerPoint, we talked about 
organizing construction administration aspects of Hive. How do we organize all the stuff that architecture firms typically have as it relates to project administration? Uh, I'm going to go back. Let me clear my filters. And, and, and it's organized, again, through tags. So let me go through. If I were to uh, see A, whoop, I'm not on the tags. There we go. <laughs> CA and hit apply, get rid of my 2022 version. So I can set up a tag for CA for short, or I can spell it out, construction administration. And this will list all my different documents that I have as, a, as in this sample uh, demo that I created of, of the file types that we might want to store within Hive as it relates to our project. So we can search by, uh, right now, these are all assigned. If I come in here and assign tags, uh, or I'm sorry, that's where you assign it. We want to see what tags are already assigned. So if I click on it, uh, CA specification tags. How about this one, CA field report? And this is C should be, as it loads here, CA field report, but it's a PDF. So when you have your search filters in here, it depends on what you're looking for. You know, am I looking for a document, a Word document, or am I looking for a PDF? Or does it matter? Maybe I'm just looking for field report. It's all controlled through the tags. Uh, shop drawings, another tag. Punch list, another tag. So by organizing, kind of tackling it from the beginning with your BIM management team, and maybe hand in hand with your CA team, if your firm has a separate construction administration team, what tags do we need to include? How do you search for your content? Maybe you search by project, you know, so we need to find the specific project number. 2207. Maybe it's 2207 and I need to find, let's get rid of that, and 2207 punch list. So now it's showing me all of the, all of that as it relates to 2207 or the punch list. Um, and if I remove that, then I can just say CA punch list. Oh, come on, refresh. There we go, clear filters. And so it does come down to some advanced, you know, kind of advanced planning on how you want to organize your content. Once that's developed, then your BIM manager and or whoever he has helping him, project manager or a CA manager would come in and help him develop the tags. And then as this content is loaded, you know, for the individual projects, hey, I've got an updated shop drawing log, then they can assign those tags, assign it to specific library, whichever library you want to put it in. Um, and you can assign it to multiple libraries. Maybe I have a CA library and I have a project library uh, that I want to assign those to. You can assign multiple files to multiple libraries with multiple tags and it's again it's going to come down to how your firm organizes their content how do we want to manage and organize so now let's go let me talk big picture i think this was uh, kind of a at the end i wasn't sure if i'd have time to talk about it so now that we have all this content we have you know project folders specific to the projects we're working on, <clears throat> how can we develop and analyze that content? How can we get feedback on that content? How our users are utilizing it? And so on and so forth. Well, Hive uses a program. It's a, it's a program that comes with Hive, a background program that's part of the subscription. It's called PAL, Project Activity Logger. And what Project Activity Logger does is allow firms to analyze not only their, their company and their users and user statistics and what versions their users are using, but also your content. And you can, you can associate projects to this PAL program that then allows us to uh, 
analyze individual projects and get data analytics back on these projects. So that's something very unique with Hive with this content management is that now not only are we doing content management, but now we're doing project management and company management and how much time is being spent on projects. Uh, how about individual project summaries? Like how's the how's the model performing? How long is it taking us to load those files? What's the save to central time? Do we have any warnings? It's taking a second here to load this, uh, probably because I'm streaming and this website's trying to do data analytics at the same time. So give it just a second here. Uh, the other the other option, and I'm going to go ahead and open it while it's doing this analytics on the website, is that your IT managers can also download the summaries to a file to their to your network, store that content as a Power BI file that Power BI can then use to analyze provides a little bit quicker result because now it's working on my computer and not the cloud computer. Uh, but you're going going to get the same information. This add-ins everybody's running. How about Revit versions by specific projects? So here's the projects that have been linked in to the PAL. And then these are versions, Revit versions by user. Then we have a CMS overview tab that shows my users and who, how many licenses do I have and how many roles? How about all my content? How much content do I have? 23,000 content files search statistics what are my users searching for the most search results by user revit specific content as it as it uh, pertains to specific projects so if i were to click on a specific project it will actually show me that content uh, within that specific project and as you can see some of these are just test projects that we have rolling in here so the the content varies but you can click on it see the versions uh, here's this is all the power bi analytics here uh, so great analysis tool how about tags and this is where i was kind of going with this let's take a look at tags which ones are being used more which ones aren't being used enough Maybe we can get rid of some of these that aren't ever being searched for. Uh, very useful, again, for that data analytics side of your content system. Now let's go to the actual PAL as it relates to your projects. Uh, so we can get an overview on specific projects, how many hours have been worked on it as it relates and is logged by PAL a model summary specific to the project, a big overview of everything within your project, work set, phases, so on and so forth, with the various views that have been created, linked files, a lot of data. If, you're, if you love data, this is, uh, this is the tool to have for sure, because uh, Power BI and Hive work hand in hand to uh, uh, bring this information to you. How about load times? Let me see, I'm trying to remember which one of these, yeah has actually been worked on and it kind of shows you save to central times and durations. Performance details for the specific projects. How many errors are we getting? Uh, and I think that's down here, warnings. So a lot of content, a lot of data that this tool can push out and let you analyze as it pertains to the demo today, this webinar I'm talking about, being able to manage your content manage you know your content your tags your libraries and get data feedback on that and there's the website as it kind of filled all this out uh with and and if i click on any of these tabs it will take us to that same uh, view that we just saw in power bi so we still have a couple minutes here uh if there are any questions feel free to uh, type in the chat this is kind of a back and forth open open discussion if maybe you have some specific uh, questions regarding hive or how how other ways that you can utilize hive <clears throat> feel free to type those in the chat and i can answer those
All right, well, it appears there's no questions left today. Um, do want to remind everyone to uh, subscribe to ATG social media. If you connect on LinkedIn, <clears throat> you will get all the latest information on webinars, special events that we have on a week by week basis. And if you want to go back and watch old, uh, or new and old <laughs> webinars, tutorials, town halls on all the various tools that we offer, uh, even software as it relates to the software we sell, such as Autodesk, any of the Autodesk content, uh, go to YouTube uh, for ATG USA. Uh, I do want to thank you all for your time today. Appreciate you joining me on this Friday. Uh, hope you have a great weekend. And again, thank you again, uh, atgusa.com for any questions, comments, or content requests. Hey there, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe and check out some of the other content on our channel.